as I apologize for the low light uh, hanging with me the uh, light will get better later on I just want to show you here I have a TM 281A Let's see if we can get this to focus and this is my 2 meter mobile so I've got a couple frequencies in here. and I'm just going to go to the VFO so you can see it'll receive down to 137 but if I try to transmit it will not and it should not that is receive only because amateur operators do not have privileges in that band so that particular rig one of my favorites uh, we're gonna modify it so we're gonna take it in the house um, I'll rip it apart with we'll some better quality video and I'll show you how to modify it to uh, do tra um, expand apologize for the shaking the and wiggling and all this other good stuff still working on getting this uh, mount perfect and steady uh, camera mounts a pretty new thing for me here so slowly working that out cool well, well it's gonna move anyway alright that's as good as it's gonna get people so here is my Kenwood well there we go my Kenwood TM 281A model and if we flip this over, and the light's not too much of a big deal, you should be able to see the model up here. There you go. So we have a screw here. We have a screw here. We're going to take those screws out so we can get to the uh, board. And we'll be able to wideband mod this uh, for transmitting the FRS bands, among other things. Now, clearly... That is not something you should be doing, unless you actually know what you are doing. Uh, there are laws against actually transmitting on those bands. I'm doing it essentially for the purpose that if there is an emergency and I need to get to a frequency like that, that I can. Um, you know, if nobody's on a local repeater, but I have access to the FRS band, I'm sure as hell going to use it if it's an emergency. And if the radio is not modded ahead of time, that's not something I'll be able to do. So you just take this, and you push up. I would push down so you're pushing against the plastic instead of the metal. And this cap just pops up and off. Nice and easy. So there's our Kenwood cap. And right underneath this guy here, if we pull this up very carefully, there's a bunch of little resistors. Zero ohm resistors are basically solder blobs. We're just going to go in there and plop it out. So let me go ahead and readjust the camera for a better angle. That should be pretty damn good. And we're going to heat up our soldering iron here. And I think I'm going to use these tweezers. Let me get in here and see how difficult this is going to be. Yeah, not bad. I would like to hold this back somehow. See if I can figure that out while this is heating. Because obviously you don't want nothing to happen to that. The last thing I want to do is hit it with the uh, soldering iron. And to be honest, I probably don't even need the tweezers. If I just heat this up and push it over, well being careful which way I push it of course it should just slide right off but see this iron how there's some solder on the tip I'm gonna clean that off we don't want excess solder um, because it could get on the board and damage the radio obviously that's not something you want to happen I paid quite a bit of money for this I don't want to break it that being said I am willing to risk it I've modified every radio I own and I'll continue to do so but anyway, enough of me blabbering and running my mouth. Let's see, the soldering iron is almost hot enough. And we'll be able to pop this off. This should be resistor 768. If we pull this back, 
Yeah, R768. I don't know if you can see it, but it is. Now let's try this. Iron's almost hot enough. There you go. Resistor 768. Alright, I'm going to try and slide this off first without using the tweezers because I really think that whole resistor is going to get so hot that it's just going to slide off without uh, really giving me any trouble. And I might be wrong on that, so let me get the tweezers that I lost in the great tweezer accident of 74, something like that, using my finger to hold this ribbon cable, because again, we like our ribbon cable and we don't want to mess that up. And there it is. So it really only needed to uh, be heated from the one side. You can see where that resistor is now gone. So here it is. If I can figure out how to use this thing. Yeah, it's really hard to see. But more importantly, look at the board. Let's see if I can aim this. There you go. So that resistor is gone. We'll put it back in the car, power it up. Um, may or may not have to do a reset. If I do, um, I'll document it and show you how to reset it. But I don't think I have to in this case. And uh, that's about it. We'll go ahead and program it up for uh, some FRS frequencies. I apologize for the poor video quality. Quality. We're back in the car with the radio. I'm going to show you what happens when you turn it on after completing the modification. So it says wait. TM281. And it um, has completely reset. So you will have to put all your frequencies back in. I'll have to go get a computer and reprogram this sucker. However, let's go down to 136. And you can see that does work. Obviously, don't actually do that. You're not really supposed to. But I just wanted to show that it does, in fact, work. Offset sucks right now, so I can't do um, 144.39, but whatever. So you get the point. There it is, modded, ready to go, and I'll program it off camera. But uh, that's all there is to it.